It's not about the integrity of the invention. It's not about protecting artistic integrity. For almost all of our clients, intellectual property has one purpose, to help make them more money. Return on investment, net income, future income, all versus the initial and continuing investment. In my mind, in the mind of most of our clients, that is the name of the game. Now, how can a small business maximize its return on investment with regards to intellectual property? The answer lies in blocking competition in certain venues and increasing sales because of that lower competition. Let's get into it. Let's start with the minimum ROI that a small business should expect from its IP investments. Return on investment is net income divided by investment. A rule of thumb is that when you buy a stock, you should expect a 7% return on investment every year. If you invest $1,000 today, a year from today, it should be worth $1,070. A year after that, $1,145. Two years later, $1,225. Three years later, $1,311. Five years later, about $1,500. And 10 years after your initial investment, your $1,000 stock should be worth more than double what you paid for it. Let's be honest though, no one is running a small business to double their money in 10 years. It takes way too much work and way too much risk to make the same as if you just dumped your money in the stock market. On top of that, a lot of intellectual property does not show returns for years. So you have to wait and earn nothing, just pay out. So when the returns start coming, they have to be bigger. They have to justify the extra work and the extra risk. I would suggest that at a minimum, you should be looking for a 30% ROI. That means that if you spend $5,000 to acquire a particular piece of intellectual property, you should make at least $1,500 a year from that IP once it actually starts to pay. Let's take an example of a trademark filing. If you look on our site, you can get some sense for how much it costs to file for a trademark. Let's say that it's a simple word mark and that the total outlay to get the mark on file and issued is about $2,500. A 30% ROI means that you are making at least $750 a year off of the trademark. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that should be no problem. Let's look at some examples. Let's take our trademark from before the one that costs $2,500 to get registered. A trademark will often take about a year to be registered from the initial filing. What are some ways that you can use that trademark to exclude competition? To start, if you sell on Amazon, one immediate benefit of a trademark registration is being able to make use of the Amazon brand registry, which allows you to assume a lot more control over your brand and products as they are listed on Amazon, including the ability to remove counterfeit listings directly from Amazon without involving anybody else. From our experience, it is not uncommon for an Amazon store to see a 10% increase in sales immediately after joining brand registry. And we have seen some stores report up to a 100% increase in sales within a year. However, let's use the lower number. Let's use 10%. Now, let's say that you run a modest Amazon store, one that does $40,000 a month with a 10% margin. If you're in the online selling game, you know those numbers are very modest. A 10% increase in revenue means an extra $4,000 a month in sales. It also means an extra $400 a month in profit, or even more if your margin expands due to lower competition. But again, let's use the conservative number. 
That means your $2,500 investment in a trademark can conservatively lead to an extra $4,800 per year in profits or a ROI of 192% year after year, as long as you keep the markup. And that is just the start. There are so many ways that a trademark, a trade secret, a patent, a copyright can be used to make a business more profitable, to keep your competitors away from your customers, your employees, your products, you name it. We focus on those opportunities. We focus on helping our clients understand and capitalize on those opportunities. If there is anything that separates us from the behemoth IP firms, this is it. It's our focus on our clients' ROI. So 30% is not unreasonable. It's an absolute minimum if you are intelligent about the kind of IP to invest in. And we take pride in helping our clients only invest in IP that will deliver at least that level of ROI. I regularly see clients get returns of 1,000%, 10x or more on their entire IP budget. It's all about choosing the right IP to protect and focusing on the dollars and cents. We work with our clients so that we can understand their businesses and help them identify the IP that will lead to 1,000% return. And generally, if we don't see a good likelihood of at least a 30% return on investment for our clients, we will let our clients know. If you are interested in getting a reasonable ROI on your IP and your attorney is not getting it done, attorneys at my firm would be happy to talk to you. We work with all sorts of clients, ranging from small businesses, many of which operate online, to individual inventors and even some mid-sized businesses. We would love to talk to you and see if we are a good fit for your firm and vice versa. And last but not least, have a great day.